Hello, good day. Um, my name is Amel Baksh and I'm agricultural entomologist at the research division. Today, I am sharing some information on common pests that affect coconut in Trinidad, belonging to the phylum Arthropoda. So for in order to um, look at these pests um, on coconut, we can put them into categories. So arthropod pests, So these pests, uh, arthropods belong to the animal kingdom, and under arthropods there are different groups. So they are based, they are placed in classes. So we have the class insects and the class of arachnids. So under the class of insects, there are a number of orders, um, Hemiptera, and under the Hemiptera there are the armored scales or the diaspididae. Um, Pseudococcidae, the millibugs, coccidae, the um, soft scales, and white flies, leaf hoppers, and aphids. Another order, Coleoptera, which are the um, beetles, um, Lepidoptera, the moth and butterflies, Hymenoptera, wasp, and um, Autoptera, the locusts and grasshoppers, Isoptera, termites, and Tysonoptera, the on trips. So under arthropods, there are two classes, the insects, and there are also the class of mites. Um, the reason why this is um, put in um, categories is not just um, a note on theory. Um, when insects are put in these groups, they share certain characteristics. And these characteristics are also important um, when we are considering management options. So for the arachnids, tenupalpidae, that's uh, one of the important um, mites, uh, the red palm mite, and the areophid mite is another mite, so as the fruit mite. Um, so as we get into it, I will go into a little more detail. So from this um, grouping, we can form larger groups. Um, we can put them into categories um, such as the, um, the defoliators, um, those that remove large quantities of leaf um, just by their mouth parts. Um, they are more cotton um, type mouth parts and they remove large um, leaf pieces. They're, then there are the sap feeders which um, suck sap from the leaves. And then <clears throat> you can put into another group pests of the inflorescence or the flowers and fruits. And then another group um, borers of palms. So, so when you look at the coconut um, plant, um, the growth of the stem is from um, an apical Mary stem, and as such. Um, they do not produce secondary growth. And this is important because if any, for any damage in that area, um, the tree can die. Um, so this is important when we consider pests that affect um, the stem. Um, coconut as a host of pests is a reliable source of food. Some insects prefer the young leaves while others, um, the older leaves. Um, the shape of the leaves, um, called the fronts, offer an advantage for small arthropods. Um, the size of the leaves also make them easy targets for arthropods. The most insects that feed on palm prefer the abaxial surface or the under the leaf um, surface. Um, so if you look at um,
The first um, Persia tropidacris cristata, um, the Cedrus locus. The Cedrus locus this, um, is described as the gi giant grasshopper of South and Central America, and they have a body length of 10 centimeters and a weak span of 18 centimeters. And they are some of the largest insects in the world. The nymphs show warning coloration of black and yellow and are often found in groups. But this pest is uh, mostly an issue in South Trinidad, although small bands um, were fo found affecting trees in the north. Pop the population migration is seasonal and outbreaks are not reported recently. The natural ecosystems act as a reservoir for these pests. The symptoms um, of damage from this pest um, a skeletonization of the leaves, and this results in reduced photosynthetic area, and plants take some time, depending on the amount of damage, to recover. And it will lead to a reduction in um, yield. For management, although there, are, there may be affected trees within an estate, broadcast application of chemicals may not be warranted, since um, these insects are well camouflaged in the vegetation, detection of damage can um, be, de be, be de observed um, way, way long after they have moved on. Another pest um, that can be considered a defoliator, um, Rasolis soferi. Um, this is the um, coconut caterpillar. Um, it's a reddish-brown reddish caterpillar distributed throughout tropical South America. Um, they severely attack palms um, and the leaves are stripped and only the bare mid-ribs are left. The leaves are webbed together as um, observed during um, feeding and they hide during the day and they come out at night to feed on the leaves. Um, caterpillars aggregates between the axle of the leaves and mass migration occurs during the night and can defoliate fronds within a short period of time. Um, rehabilitation of defoliated trees can take up to two years. And this was reported by Griffith. Um, management. Egg and pupal parasites are very effective and parasi parasitize the respective host up to 70 and 30 percent respectively. So they are much affected by natural enemies. And in the animal kingdom, just as in the animal kingdom, um, where you have um, lions and tigers keeping um, population at bay, so too in the animal kingdom under the arthropods, there is the same um, scenario where you have um, natural enemies controlling populations. And again, it is not a note in theory, it is a real um, situation. Um, natural enemies play a very important and vital role in controlling pests. And we, as farmers, as householders, we must be aware of this. Um, sometimes using chemicals, um, while they might be effective in a short period of time, um, they also destroy natural enemies and must be used with care. Um, for treatment of this pest, um, there is a biological control option which is available um, using um, bacillus um, called Dipel or Bt. Another pest of concern and can be considered also a defoliator, Automeris species. It's a Lepidoptera, means that um, it belongs to the mott family. And the larvae occasionally are found in dense populations, can cause considerable defoliation. However, usually under natural control, again by parasitic wasp. Um, so the caterpillars are light green and covered with numerous needle pointed branch spines. Um, and it can be identified with a long, narrow, whitish strip running along each side, as seen in the, the fourth photo. Um, larvae can be as long as 60 millimeters and records from Trinidad show that this species 
um, is highly polyphagous, which means it attacks a number of different crops and potentially a minor pest on a variety of crops and trees. However, they pose a hazard to workers because of their stinging hairs. Um, so the adults um, are called giant silk moths um, and they have conspicuous eye-like markings on it the upper surface of the, what we call the dorsal surface of the hind wings. Um, because it is an occasional pest of minor importance, no control measures are recommended. So the number of common foliage pests, um, which um, are sap feeders, um, because of the mouth parts and they are placed under the order as Hemipteras, the Hemipteran order. Um, so you have scales, millibugs, palm, aphids, white flies, and well, mites belong to a different um, class, but they also, because of their, their mouth parts, they suck sap from the, um, the plant, and therefore they are sap feeders. So these pests contribute to poor health and performance of palms, and they affect the aesthetic value on palms in the landscape. <clears throat> The first um, Ceratophis uh, brasiliensis is the um, adult, the palm aphid. They are wingless and have an oval or slightly convex body that is dark brown and glossy with a peripheral fringe of white wax plates. They range in size from one to two millimeters long. So they are very small um, insects and um, to the average um, person who is not aware of this pest, they may just look um, as a deformed part of the, the plant, but it's actually a living insect. And you can see how small they are, one to two millimeters. So one um, characteristic of this insect is they produce a lot of what you call honeydew, which is unused um, food that they take up in their body. They release it as a sweet substance, um, as a waste material called honeydew. Um, and these droplets from the, the rare part of the insect can actually be um, ejected up to a half inch away. Um, the importance of honeydew is that um, it causes this black growth, as you see in the first photo, called sutimol, which reduces the photosynthetic area of the plant. And the plant is not be able to manufacture food as it should. And therefore, you have a reduction of um, food available to the plant and productivity could uh, re reduce. The aphids have functional legs but remain mostly sedentary unless disturbed. Palm aphid adults are commonly confused with other scale insects, but it is an aphid. The palm aphid is usually found on the on open leaves and the youngest two of the, of, of the three leaves and occasionally on young fruits of the host palms. The aphids can appear motionless while feeding for long periods of time. Palm aphids are usually associated with ants and involve the typical mutualistic if ant aphid relationship where ants supply protection to the aphids and they derive food from the honeydew that the aphids um, eject out of their system. So the ants get food and they also protect the aphids from any predators coming to attack attack them. So this is a, a mutualistic relationship that is usually associated with aphids. Palm aphids can cause substantial damage to young coconut palms. Palm aphids, they pierce the palm foliage and suck out the um, plant contents from the phloem, causing yellowing of the tissues and loss of plant vigor. In addition, as mentioned, the, the honeydew produce reduce the cause sutimol and reduce photosynthesis. Palms heavily infested with aphids can experience stunted growth. On mature palms, they cause extensive necrosis or rotten on the younger leaves where the aphids tend to ag aggregate. Management. 
farms should be monitored for sooty mold production to determine if or sooty mold production or this um, black fungal growth on the leaves if they are infested with aphids. So this, this is an indicator that something is going on with your plant and therefore um, it's likely that there's a sucking insect and could be aphids. If, if high population of aphids are observed with few or new, no natural enemies present, um, horticultural oils can be applied for control. There are a number of oils that are available in pesticide formulations on the market and they offer a safe option for control of aphids. For professional growers of palms, however, an insecticide may be necessary for control. However, it must be noted again that conventional pesticides can kill um, natural enemies and should be considered as a last option only. Systemic insecticides with short pre-harvest intervals offer good alternative measures. And there are a number of biological control agents which are associated with palm aphids. And these are some of them. Um, a lot of them are what called um, the coccinellids or the ladybird beetles. And they are different species. So you can see the palm aphid on the bottom left and the beetles, the natural enemies. Another pest, um, Allurodica species or white flies. The, fem the female walks in a tight spiral on a leaf on the side and it lays its egg and depositing patches of white wax as she goes, forming an oviposition spiral of small white patches two centimeters across. The leaf on the side becomes covered with white woolly wax, which may impede gas exchange and photosynthesis. Population of white flies are often reduced by strong wind and heavy rain. However, the waxy colonies of Allurodica species situated on, situated on the protected leaf undersides are less badly affected than most. Um, again, biological control, a number of biological control agents are affect this um, pest um, and actually for chemical control the effectiveness of pesticide sprays against um, Allurodicus or whitefly species tend to be reduced because of their habit of living under the leaves and also because of the water repellent waxy covering that develops over colonies. Any pesticide used against them should be carefully selected to avoid injury to the natural enemy complex which exists because the natural enemies are actually working for you and keeping the pests under control. Another subfeeder, Aspidiotus destructor or the scale, the coconut scale. The, the insect feeds on plant sap from leaves, stems and fruits, causing yellowing, tissue distortion and dieback. The coconut scale is a pest of concern um, on coconut and other perennial crops due to its relatively short life cycle of around 25 days. The coconut scale is known to be dispersed by birds, bats and insects as well as wind. Coconut scale resembles other armored scales in that the body is protected by a waxy cover. Infestations may be noted by the formation of closely packed colonies as seen in the first photo. And in that photo, you will see each circle here represents a scale. And what happens is that the scale after the, the eggs hatch they form a waxy covering. So what we are seeing here are the adults under this waxy covering um, with eggs 
and they can lay up to 60 eggs. Um, these insects are very small, and again, they will appear as um, a deformation of the leaf, but they are actually feeding and moving. They have legs and, and removing sap and reducing the vitality of the plant. So just to let you know how small the nymphs are 0.2 millimeters in diameter. Um, for this pest, the male and female uh, exhibit different forms. Um, so the males, while they are, they are small with, with wings, the fe adult females are, are circular and and appear under the waxy covering. Um, most of, of the scales are present on the undersurface of coconut leaves, as well as, as on the, the stalks, the flower, the leaf stalks. Um, they can also be present on the flowers or the inflorescence and the young fruits. Um, for chemical control, various insecticides are registered for control of armored skills. Um, and the crawler stages are generally the most susceptible to insecticides. Um, contact action insecticides, including horticultural oils, become progressively less effective once the scale insects develop their waxy covering. So at any one point in time, there will be adults with wax covering them. They are going to be crawlers outside of the wax covering, looking for a new place to form their own um, area where they can form their covering as well. Um, the crawlers will be, be vulnerable to insecticide, but the um, adults under the, the wax um, chemicals will not be able to penetrate or they are not as effective. However, um, this pest is highly um, Pre, um, con is controlled by natural enemies, and these are some of the, the natural enemies that are associated with the coconut scale. Um, a very important one, Cryptognatha um, nordiceps, is a, and in the 1920s, this um, natural enemy was actually sent from Trinidad through the at that time, the International Institute for Biological Control, which is now CAB, CABI, it was sent to the Fiji Island to control the same pest. Now we have um, these pests here, these are pests um, in our local situation. So again, conservation of these natural enemies are very important. So another subfeeder, but belonging to an, a different class under the arthropods, um, Rawila indica, the red palm mite. So it belongs to the, the class called arachnids, um, and they are related to the spiders. So. The red palm mite is an invasive pest that entered the Caribbean in 2004 in Martinique. And in Trinidad, it, it was detected in 2006 and considered at the time an important factor hampering coconut production. The pest had serious consequences for the, the coconut industry with an estimated 70% yield reduction at that time. Typical field symptoms, premature yellowing and necrosis or rotting of the red palm mite infested leaves. Um, they are usually found on the undersurface of the leaves in very large numbers. They feed by inserting their stylets, a very narrow um, straw-like um, mouth part into the stomata between the guard cells um, and suck the sap from the plant. Coconut palms severely affected by the mite showed um, 
entirely yellow leaves, particularly, particularly on the lower third region of the plant. The yellow color of the leaflets is followed by the abortion of flowers and small nuts in coconut palms, and they are readily dispersed by the wind and man. This resulted in a consultancy from India by an Indian scientist, and from there, information um, was drawn from surveys conducted at the time, and it provided the status of the red palm mite in this country, and also as well as the natural enemies of the red palm mite. In all areas where red palm mite was, was found, including Trinidad, Amplicius lagonensis, the predatory mite, was identified as the natural enemy of interest. Um, it was already here, however, it is it was considered it is considered a generalist predator, which means that it will not depend on the red palm mite and will have other food sources. Um, and it was the most it was the most predominant natural enemy found during the time here um, of the Indian scientists among field collected natural enemies. So in all their surveys, Amblicius laguensis um, was the most prevalent, and therefore lab protocols were developed for multiplying this natural enemy. Protocols were also developed for studying the natural enemy in a laboratory. So Rawala and Inca um, is widely spread on all coconut areas. Um, there is a population explosion at that time, causing extensive yellowing drastically reducing coconut production and had impacts on economic, environmental and social impacts. A number of generalist natural enemies which were found on attacking red palm mice in Trinidad during the surveys. Um, the And first one there is Amblicius lagoensis. So they have predatory um, mites. And the second row, you have the, the ladybird beetles or the coccinellus. There are some trip species that were found, um, lace wings, um, Chrysopola species, um, and some, some of the mites exhibit um, infection by, by, by fungus around which were, were cultured and developed into a program on the CABI. So from management of the red palm mite, um, there are so after the consultancy, the red palm mite studies continued. So this is just um, to show you how the um, studies were conducted at research. Um, um, this is a setup for greenhouse studies. Um, we also had studies in the lab. Um, these are what we call the arenas, the egg laying arenas, because in order to multiply a natural enemy, you also have to find food for the natural enemy to survive. And in this case, the natural enemy was being fed um, red palm mite eggs. So we had to, to rear the red palm mite also and, and then collect the eggs from there and feed the, the natural enemy to multiply them. This um, slide shows um, field release procedure at strategic locations throughout Trinidad. So you can see um, the cages were built on the coconut tree for nurturing newly released um, lab red natural enemies. The trees were labeled and population levels for both red palm mite and the natural enemy were monitored weekly until the natural enemy established. So these are our staff members here working 
um, on releasing the natural enemy, which was fed only repam mite in the lab. So, so after the, the consultant, we conducted um, field studies. Uh, we found that um, population levels generally high in the dry season, which was expected, and reducing into the wet season and later in the year. So rainfall, humidity, and light intensity was reported as influencing population levels. After repamide was detected in Trinidad and had and had it. It had a direct impact on coconut production. Trees were not producing as they should. However, after a number of years, production, production levels gradually increased and red palm mite levels and symptoms were much lower, particularly on estates inland when compared to the coastal areas. So a study was conducted to validate these observations and we found that Coastal areas had significantly higher population of red palm mite when compared to inland areas. And in both inland and coastal areas, the levels were also lower when surveys were conducted closer to the time of um, detection in, um, in the country. So as time went on, the population levels dropped. However, um, coastal areas still showed higher levels when compared to the inland areas. So productivity after um, some time increased. You can could have seen um, coconut vendors and then coconut on the side of the road again. Um, the trees started to, to look um, not um, expressing these symptoms of the yellowing and chlorosis and this could have been due to the natural enemy getting accustomed to its new food source and keeping populations um, under control. For the coastal areas, for all the coastal areas surveyed, um, what we found was that um, the section in, in green it is not um, very vis visual, but the section in green represents the East Coast, Manzanala and Mayaro, still represented um, high population um, levels of red palm mite when compared to the other coastal areas, the southwestern coast, the northwestern coast. Um, so, and from this study, um, the East Coast still had a high, um, um, higher red palm mite population levels than the other coastal areas. From the study, we also found that um, the natural enemy population uh, was found to be significantly higher in the Cedrus area. And this was very interesting. Um, so at this point, I will want to, to recognize um, a couple of officers who worked along with the, um, the Indian scientists, um, Mr. Fazan Hussein, Ms. Petal Ram, um, other officers, Mukash Ram Dani and Caroline Lakan, and support staff, um, Anil Ramcharan, Jain Babu Ram, Nigel Allen and others. Um, it was painstaking work studying mites under the microscope daily and traveling long distances in order to get data to um, provide answers. It was strenuous work um, co um, counting, but so we, in order to get the work done, we had to um, purchase what you call um, a mite counting machine because there's thousands of mites you're counting on a daily basis. 
actually might machine assisted a bit um, in this regard. So another PES uh, SAP um, feeder, Aplaxias crudus. Um, it's a leaf hopper. And it feeds on palm foliage. And on palm, the palm and other members of the palm family. It has a wide host range and haven't been found on more than 30 species of palms. But Haplaxias crudus is considered to be a, of major economic importance, not only because um, of its feeding habit by sucking the sap from the plant, but it was also confirmed as a vector for lethal yellowing, a disease caused by a phytoplasma that is lethal to a wide variety of economically important palm species. Throughout the Caribbean basin, lethal yellowing has resulted in the death of millions of coconut palms, thus causing severe economic losses to both ornamental and agricultural sectors of the Caribbean nations. So part of the work at research is to conduct um, surveillance activities um, for this disease, lethal yellowing, and alongside um, the surveys, we will also be looking at the vector. But generally, the vector population was found to be low, and again, because of our rich biodiversity and being um, in proximity to the South American continent, um, the population levels um, uh, appear to be under control by natural enemies. However, for vectors, one vector is um, considered enough to spread the disease and therefore the economic threshold could be considered one. Acerea goranensis, um, the fruit mite, so um, it was put separate from the red palm mite because this mite affects the inflorescence. So if we were able to remember our groupings, um, although they have sap feeders, they also had a category um, for those pests which affect the inflorescence and fruits. Acerea affects is the coconut mite, and that scarring effect you see on coconuts that is caused by the, the coconut mite. It was first reported in Trinidad in, in the Sierra Peninsula in 1976, and it's invisible to the naked eye, and is recognizable under the calyx. Um, that area close to where the foot is attached to the stem. Um, all local cultivars are affected and it causes drying of the young fruits, premature nut drop, um, reduction in nut size, malformation of fruits, distortion, stunting, and discoloration. And damage is seen as whitish triangular blotches, as you see in the, in the, in the photo on the outer part of the fruit or the exocarp. It, is, it moves from one palm to another on air currents and carried on insects or birds that visit the coconut flowers. This microscopic mite feeds by piercing the young plant tissue and sucking the juices. It develops on the marisomatic zone of the young nuts. And within about a month, um, they develop between the coconut surface and the calyx. So they are feeding under um, the, the covering of the coconut called the calyx. They feed under there, so they are, they are not visible and they are also protected. So for management of this um, mite, pruning of all nuts in all stages of development toward the end of the rainy season is recommended. At this point, uh, the mite population is lowest, and therefore um, there will be greater impact on control. And the rate of new infestations has been reduced by the rain to a minimum. Removal of affected nuts and inflorescence and burning them. By drenching the, the inflorescence and fruits with um, oil, water, emulsions, as mentioned, there are a number of horticultural oils available, and this 
or may offer the, the best approach compared to insecticides. So some of the horticultural oils available are golden, golden pest spray, um, mitex and neem, neem oil based products. Another piece of um, the inflorescence, a number of um, micro lepidopteron, which are small moths, were found affecting the inflorescence. Um, by work done by Koch and Hussein in 2012. However, this can be um, confused with um, poor fertilization, which will also result in nut drop. So the only way to really determine if you're the inflorescence is being affected by um, these pests is by observing under the microscope. Since the larvae are very small, However, um, there are, as mentioned before, biological control insecticides such as Dipel and UBT, which can offer some measure of control. Um, as, as a biological control insecticide, you're also important that you to note that you'll be spraying the inflorescence. So if you're using conventional insecticides on the inflorescence, remember, that they are pollinators that are important for coconuts, such as bees. And therefore, that's the reason for recommending biological um, insecticides, such as Dipel and Bt. So for the, the insects that borrow the plant and that group, um, the Strategus is a uh, weevil that um, was found more in the seedress area, however, it has a lot of beneficial um, habits in that it feed on decaying organic matter. Um, however, sometimes they can feed on living roots and um, we have found it in, in the seedress area, um, feeding on seedling um, coconut, coconut trees now planted in the, in the field. But the population level and the the damage um, was not substantial to cause um, to warrant any chemical treatments. However, if this pest is found affecting um, localized treatment for on the plant, can can be um, done. Rhinophorus palmarum, effective for rendering disease in nematode. So this is the vector for the red ring disease and the causal organism is a nematode. So it was initially called root disease by Novel in 1919 and found where he found large numbers of nematodes in coconut roots from Trinidad. And it's important to note that red ring disease was first detected in coconuts and cedrus in Trinidad by Hart in 1905. So this is a, a diagrammatic representation by Howard and others um, in pests of palms. And it offers a good summary on a very complex disease. Um, so So what the diagram is, is indicating here is that um, for this disease to occur, uh, a number of thing, uh, components must be present. First of all, you must have a, a healthy, susceptible coconut tree. Secondly, the nematode must be present. Thirdly, the vector must be present. And the other thing is that you have a disease tree. So what this diagram is, is 
indicating here is that the disease in a new or isolated field generally begins with an infected, healthy, susceptible coconut tree. And susceptibility for coconuts are usually between three to 10 years old. And the life cycle of the infection is about three months. Palm weevils will deposit the nematodes at the leaf bases and on wounds of healthy trees. The palm weevil vector a strong fly as it travel two kilometers in 24 hours. The preferred habit is at the bases of the leaf axles, that is between the leaf and the stem. The female makes several punctures in the soft internodal portion of the crown and oviposit, depositing hundreds of infective juveniles. So while they oviposit or while they are laying, the females are laying their eggs, and during this process, they also release the nematode by the hundreds. The nematodes, as they enter the, the tree, they begin to multiply. The trees become diseased and show symptoms, including the red ring. And while at the same time, the weevils are also completing their life cycle in the same tree. This disease tree is therefore the focal point for management of the disease, since both the vector weevils and the pathogenic nematodes are defenselessly contained in one location, this conspicuous disease tree. It is, it is clear that the tree must be eliminated. But this has been a problem for, for us in order to, uh, when we are, go to advise farmers, especially those in smaller estates, it's very difficult to ask someone to remove that tree. You know, the thought process will always be that um, they will want to try everything possible to save that tree. And understandably, um, you have to wait three to five years for the tree to bear and then to have a problem, um, you will want to try to save the, that tree. However, at that point where the first symptoms appear, the, the larvae are also in the tree. And it's a good time to also control by removing that tree. So losses to red ring disease um, are heaviest at the end of the wet season and during the first three months of the dry season, that is between December and February. Palm weevils are attracted to and oviposit in, in the dying coconut tree. So you will have an infected um, weevil carrying nematodes. That weevil can attack a healthy susceptible tree as well as it can attack a dying coconut tree, one that does, has, uh, already has red ring disease. The reason being is that while this tree, this infected tree is dying, it releases volatiles, um, products of fermentation, and this makes the tree attractive to more weevils. And so this cycle continues. So then the adult weevils will emerge um, from the infested tree. They will, so the, the, the other um, point to mention about the dying um, red ring disease tree is that it is a source for the inoculum, it is a source for the vector. But the nematode depends on the living tissue. And when the tree is dying, that nematode is will not remain. It cannot survive in the dying tissue. So the only, the, the, the nematode is dependent on the vector to move it from that tree to an next tree. And that's why, um, as mentioned before, this disease tree, management of this disease tree is a focal point for controlling this disease. So the destructive stages of the um, ring of forest palm around the palm weevil. Um, in the photo, you see the adult. And these are adults we are wearing in the lab um, and sugar cane. Um, secondly, you see the lava on the right photo, um, the kind of tunneling it, 
it, it will do on the coconut. This tree was dying, and when we took it down, you could see it tunneling, and the larvae was also present there. So both the larva and adult uh, are destructive to the coconut tree. So trees show a progressive yellowing and bronzing from the tips of the leaves to the base, and in the older to the younger leaves. So the yellowing starts from underneath the, the yellowing bronzing discoloration of the leaves and starts from the, the lower leaves and gradually moves up. The petioles, the leaf stalks, break at the base and several yellowish to bronze, bronze leaves hang around the trunk. trunk. The nuts fall prematurely and the inflorescence dies. This is a typical, um, this tree is, shows typical symptoms of what you look at. You see the lower leaves, um, that yellowing and bronzing effect. Um, the lower leaves dying and, and if you look in the background to the left, you'll see um, the crown of, of one of the trees broke off. Well, this disease is, is usually associated with heavy infestation of, of, of wrinkle forests or the weevils. And sometimes by the, the level of, of tunneling in the um, tree can cause it to break off. But at this stage here, what is happening is that you have um, nematodes in that tree as well as you is likely to have um, defectors present. Again, um, discoloration of the stem. So when you take down a, a, a disease tree, you can see disease symptoms on the photo on the left. You see a distinct ring and a hole in the cross section here that is made by the um, the weevil. So the, this is not seen um, on the outside, but this is happening in in there. Um, these weevils on the photo on the right, you can see the tunnels in the cross section. An uh, easy way to, to confirm is by making a notch on the, the trunk where you, it will reveal the um, red ring. So there are num number, so in, when we are considering management, um, there are a number of trap designs in order to um, trap the weavers. Um, so when you are looking at trap designs, it should be cheap, easy to construct, material readily available, and should be easy to service. So this is some trap designs here. Um, there will be another pr um, presentation um, coming up on trapping, so I will not go into too much detail. Um, Mr. Vidal Balarat Singh will be um, carrying out that um, session. So just to mention quickly, uh, the top right is a discarded oil container. On the left is a five gallon container, um, which we call the bucket traps and they are made um, using funnel. So in the, the bucket trap, the weavers enter, they cannot escape. Um, however, on the, one, the, the trap on the right, the weavers enter, but a, um, a killing agent need to be used because uh, while they are feeding, they could also escape. So how trapping works, the adult palm weavers are attracted to chemical compounds from sugarcane or from the coconut plant, and they are also attracted to male aggregation pheromone. And this now has been, um, they have synthesized the, uh, the male aggregation pheromone, which is a pheromone produced by the males. They attract both males and females, and therefore this now has, they have identified this in South America and they have made a product out of it, so it's available. Um, so we conducted some labor, lab studies and we found to evaluate chemicals which were um, effective um, on the on Rinko Forest Palmeram and the reason for, for doing this evaluation um, so it was a preliminary preliminary study um, just to, to evaluate some of the chemicals that are available on the market and which will work on Rinkoforest Palmer. And as I mentioned, the reason is not for broadcast application into the field. The reason is 
for controlling that infected tree, how to manage that infected tree in the um, in the field. Um, so for those who are aware of you, you'll know that um, in literature, Dr. Griffith, who was our past director of research, he kind of, he is internationally recognized for his work on um, red ring disease. And he um, always, part of his um, recommendation is on controlling that um, infected tree. Um, by cutting and heaping and using an insecticide. So this trial here was to, to determine which chemicals um, are effective on Rhinophorus palmarum. So here it is, uh, and this slide here shows the field sanitation activities. Um, and this is our staff members here. Um, Samukesh Ramnani, um, Vidal Balrad Singh, Nigel Allen, and others. Um, so what the tree um, was cut down and then it was heaped up and drenched with insecticide. Um, so this, therefore, um, should be done weekly until the, the material starts to rot at which time it can then be burnt. So our um, work at research also involves field visits, so um, requests from the public um, on pests of coconut, we visit and we try, and then we diagnose the problems in the field and we recommend um, measures, management measures for farmers and for residents alike. So for red ring disease management, the most effective strategy to lower the incidence of red ring disease is rapid elimination of the nematode infected palms. Together with reduction of weevils by trapping the adults, so wrinkle um, the commercially available um, pheromone with sugarcane was successfully used in Costa Rica to reduce palm weevil populations in the African oil palm. So there are thousands of, of acres of oil palm and they are doing, currently doing research on, um, on how they have red ring disease because um, red ring disease causes mortality to uh, um, so the African oil palm and it affects their productivity. So they also have re they have research going on there, and we try to keep up to date with their research so that we can um, validate here and and share with the the farming community. So if you have any questions, I, you can post it up in the in the chat. Um, so I will. Okay, so you can also contact your nearest um, extension office if you need to get in contact with us in research at the entomology unit. Um, you can also come in into Centeno and place your request on we have a diagnostic form which we can um, place your contact information on and the problem that you are having and do conduct a follow-up visit for you. So you can do that through the um, ex your closest extension office. Um, so you, you, you should know where your office is or you can come directly to us. Um, I will I will also um, leave with you the email address for the entomology unit so that you can um, contact us. You can up upload your photos or you can um, make a request through the email. 
So if you give me a, a couple of seconds, I'm going to, to look at. So the email um, address at the entomology unit is entodiag, E-N-T-O-D-I-A-G, with a capital E. Again, capital E, E-N-T-O-D-I-A-G. Laboratory, L-A-B-O-R-A-T-O-R-Y, with a capital L, at gov.tt. So thank you very much for attending.